All right. Okay. So we uh, we are going to continue here uh, talking about the uh, the beta binomial model. Uh, on Monday we left off. Uh, we talked about the beta distribution, and we saw that it's a distribution defined from zero to one, and uh, and because of that, it's it's often useful for kind of modeling a random proportion, or random probability, or something um, along those lines. There. All right. So, uh, so let's get into this. Okay, so we established that the PDF of the beta distribution is equal to this. This is, if you go on Wikipedia and you look up the beta distribution, it's gonna look just like this. And, uh, and the important part that I want you to pay attention to is this. Theta is kind of the, the proportion that's between zero and one. And, um, and it's gonna be raised to the, uh, the alpha minus one. And then over here, I've got one minus theta, and it is raised to the beta minus one. And meanwhile, there's this big constant in the front, or this, I don't know about big, but just this constant in the front, uh, and, and it's calculated with this. But the entire purpose of this constant is so that this function is a PDF, in that uh, when we take the integral of it, that the integral is equal to one, okay? Because if I, uh, if I get rid of this constant, then this thing will integrate to something else, uh, which isn't necessarily one. And so by, uh, by putting this here, it's going to, uh, to integrate, um, integrate to one, because that's kind of the rule of a PDF is that the whole integral has to equal one. Okay. And so um, this establishes a, a relationship, okay, in that um, because it's a PDF, uh, I know that if I take the integral of the entire PDF from zero to one, I know that this thing is gonna equal one, all right? And we also know that this thing is a constant, which means that, you know, even though I don't know exactly what this, <laughs> like, yeah, I've got this weird formula to calculate what it is. I can say that if I integrate just this part, this part of the PDF, okay? If I just integrate this part of it, from zero to one, I know that it's gonna equal whatever this is, B, the, the beta function of uh, alpha common beta, okay? Uh, let me see if I can upload my stuff here if you wanna follow along. Okay, so seems CCLE has survived the uh, the onslaught of requests and, uh, and let me, um, let me upload today's notes. Okay, so these are uh, these notes are available on CCLE now. Uh, I'll let me get it up for the uh, the other lecture as well, in case you're here. Uh, okay, no, struggling a bit. Okay, so is that all right? That uh, that this beta function, you know, even though we don't really know what it is, we can also just establish that is that it is equal to the integral uh, from zero to one of whatever this, this thing is. Is that, is that okay? All right, and so, and, and this relationship is gonna come in handy later um, when, we, uh, when we do stuff, okay? All right, so uh, let's go back to our baseball example. And in our baseball example, we're trying to create some kind of uh, some some way to model the uh, the batting average of a new player. Okay, and so our prior knowledge of baseball says that the um, that player batting averages are almost always uh, above 0 0.2 or above 200, and um, and most everybody's below 300. And you're gonna, you're not gonna have any players with a batting average over 400, okay? Or 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.4. And so we kind of arbitrarily chose some numbers, but a distribution that kind of reflected, you know, these ideas uh, can be expressed with a beta distribution with uh, shape parameters 81 and 219. And so, uh, and again, these these values are chosen a little bit arbitrarily, but if we do choose these numbers, we get uh, a distribution that looks like this, which kind of fits the description that we're looking for, 
Okay, and again, there's nothing magical about these numbers. It's just, you know, you could pick kind of some other numbers that are kind of similar, not exactly the same. And as long as you're getting a distribution that kind of fits this description, that fits kind of our, our prior knowledge of baseball, I, I think you could argue that this is the prior distribution that you're gonna use, okay? So, um, so that's fine. All right, I'm gonna just upload uh, the file again to the, um, the other class lecture. All right. And so if we want to write this as um, a PDF, okay, the PDF of the prior distribution is I'm going to just plug in 81 and 219 into the PDF of the prior, and I get this, okay, I get one over beta function 81, 219, and then theta raised to the 81 minus one, or theta raised to the 80th power, and one minus theta raised to the 218th power, okay? So, so these are, um, those, we're raising things to really high powers, but, but that's okay. Okay, and, um, and theta represents the player's batting average, and we can kind of treat it as the probability of getting a hit. It's, you know, batting average is a little bit more complicated, but just, just for simplicity, we're gonna, we're gonna treat it like it's a Bernoulli draw and it's the probability of getting a hit, okay? So it's, um, you know, I, I, I fully recognize that baseball is not the same thing as flipping a coin or it's not the same thing as drawing a marble out of a box, but just for simplicity, because um, that's what we do when we make models is we make simplified versions of the thing this is, this is how we're going to treat it as such. OK, so let's say um, you know, we get the new player. Uh, this new player has 10 at-bats, earns five hits, and we get kind of the following sequence. Um, uh, H for hit, where, or x equals 1, and O for an out, or x equals uh, 0. OK, and so we get. I was going to read this, but it's too silly. You know, oh, ho, ho, ho. Um, uh, out, hit, hit, out, and so on and so, so forth, um, which is going to be equ equivalent to 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay. Um, the, um, this is completely unrelated, but have you seen videos of people like typing in like H A H H H A into like Siri and having her read it or something? It's, it's kind of funny. All right, anyway. But um, the, uh, the probability of a hit is uh, the player's batting average theta. And the likelihood of this exact sequence is theta raised to the fifth, one minus theta raised to the fifth, OK? And we wanted to treat it as a binomial uh, probability. And we just said, um, you know, there's 10 hits, I mean, 10 at-bats and a total of five hits. You know, then you, you would have some kind of uh, binomial constant, you know, 10 choose 5 in the front here, but it, it doesn't really matter, okay? But I just have uh, theta raised to the fifth and 1 minus theta raised to the fifth. Uh, and more generally, if we have a total of n observations, n at bats or n observations, whatever it is, you know, the likelihood of any one sequence where you have a total of z successes is going to be theta raised to the z, 1 minus theta raised to the n minus z. Um, so that's, uh, okay, so that's, that's what we've established. Okay, and so for uh, Bayesian statistics, uh, it is named as such because it makes use of Bayes' rule, right? And Bayes' rule is basically the probability of A given B is the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. So this is Bayes' rule, and we're going to apply it in the context of kind of probability distributions. And, and so effectively, uh, I'm going to just replace A's with uh, thetas and B's with X, OK? And, and so the posterior distribution, this is uh, this part here. This is what we want to find, OK? This is going to be the probability distribution of the parameter um, uh, of the parameter theta. So we want to know what's the uh, probability distribution of the parameter theta um, given 
the value that we've observed, all right, or given the data that we've observed. So, so prior to prior to looking at the data, we have a you know we have some idea of what the uh, the distribution of theta might be, and then after we look at the data, um, we need to update update kind of our subjective beliefs or what we believe the distribution of theta to be. Okay. This over here, probability of x given theta, this is the probability of observing our observed data for a given value of theta. So the data that we observed was uh, we got five hits out of 10 at bats. And, and so this likelihood is going to be different for every single value of theta. Um, it's going to be maximized when theta is 0.5, but uh, we also we can also ask you know what's the probability of getting uh, five hits out of ten at bats if theta was 0.3? Uh, what is the probability of getting that if theta is 0.6? What is the probability of getting that if theta is 0.4? Okay, we're going to get different likelihood values um, of our data that is five hits out of ten at bats for different values of theta, different values of, for that batting average, okay? The prior, which is probability of theta, that's, that's that prior distribution that we created with the beta distribution. It's kind of what we believe the distribution of batting averages is before we even look at the data. That's the prior probability distribution of theta, in our case, the, uh, the batting average. And this part down here, this is what we call the marginal probability. It's the probability of observing the values in our data, that is five hits out of 10 at bats, regardless of the value of theta. So what is the, what is the probability of, um, of getting this, whether theta is 0.3, whether theta is 0.31, whether theta is 0.6 or 0.2 or some, some, other, uh, some other value, okay? This, the marginal probability is equivalent to taking the integral of the numerator across all possible values of theta, okay? And it's important to note that this, whatever this marginal probability is, is that it's a constant, okay? It's not affected by theta, right? And so because the marginal probability is a constant, this posterior pro uh, distribution, okay? The posterior distribution of theta given um, data can just be said to be proportional to the numerator, okay? It's proportional to just x, x given theta, probability of x given theta times the probability of theta. Okay, let me just pause there and just make sure everybody's okay with, uh, with, with what I've written here, okay? Um, let me give you your first quiz answer for today. The first quiz answer is A as an apple. A as an apple is your first quiz answer for, um, for today's viewing quiz, A as an apple. All right, so far so good? I feel like I've lost a lot of students between Monday and not like, not that people dropped the class, but there's only 35 of you showing up in uh, in lecture today, which I don't know. Well, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and we're going to apply um, Bayes' rule to our baseball example, right? So the likelihood, that is the likelihood of observing our sequence of five hits and 10 at-bats is going to be theta raised to the five, one minus theta raised to the five. Right. So we, we kind of established this back here. The likelihood of this sequence of data is this. All right. So I hope that's okay with everybody, that that's the likelihood of this uh, kind of the exact data that we saw. All right. And then we also established that the prior distribution of theta is a beta distribution with these shape parameters, alpha equal to 81, beta equal to 219. And so, you know, when you plug that into the PDF, the PDF of the prior distribution is this whole thing. Right. So you got one, one over uh, beta function 81 to 19, theta raised to the 81 minus one, one minus theta raised to the 219 minus one. So this is the uh, beta distribution using our 
uh, using the parameters that we kind of established. Again, slightly arbitrarily chosen, but if we choose these, we get a we get a distribution that kind of fits um, fits our ideas here. Okay, and uh, and so you know if I just say um, we're going to take the posterior distribution and just say that it's proportional to okay. So I'm not going to worry about it being exactly equal to this, but we're just going to say that it's proportional to this thing. Um, I can just take these two, the product of these two things, and I can just kind of ignore for now. I can ignore this um, this constant here because I'm just going for something that's proportional, right? So so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to uh, take this thing and multiply it with this thing, and and so this is what I have theta to the five, one minus theta to the five times theta to the, this is basically 80 and one minus theta to the 218 basically. Okay. And, uh, and so if I combine, uh, combine all of these terms, okay, we're going to get that the posterior distribution is proportional to theta raised to the 85 and one minus theta to the 223. Okay. I should probably add a slide here. Um, and we call this, um, so the fact that these two things, when we multiply them, like they multiply nicely, right? These, <laughs> the likelihood, the likelihood of our data multiplies very nicely with the PDF of our prior distribution, okay? Um, and, uh, and so the beta being, this is the prior distribution, this is known as the conjugate prior uh, to our likelihood. Um, and you have a bunch of different kind of relationships. And so maybe I'll add a slide um, about conjugate priors. And this is kind of a, a list of relationships where, uh, and we basically call it a conjugate prior. So if you have a Bernoulli or a binomial, the conjugate prior is the beta distribution. And basically uh, you get a conjugate prior if there's mathematical properties so that when you multiply them together, when you multiply them together, they, the multiplication works out very nicely, okay? And that that's kind of the case here where we have the likelihood is raised is uh, expressed as this theta to you know this power one minus theta to another power, and then the prior distribution also kind of has a similar form so that when they multiply together, you get um, they they work well, right? Okay, so anyway, um, we get that the uh, posterior distribution is proportional to this. All right, and in order to make it a PDF. We just have to find the normalizing constant, right? We just so if I take the integral of this, we're not going to get one, uh, or we're, <laughs> we're probably not going to get one, okay? And uh, and so how can I make sure that when I take the integral of this, I'm going to get one, okay? Well, um, recall that uh, early in one of our earlier slides, we established this relationship, right? So so here I'm on slide eleven, but. Back here, we said, um, because we know this whole thing integrates to one, we can establish that the integral of this is going to equal this, right? So, uh, so here we're here, and so we can just say, all right, if um, because we know this is going to be the relationship, all right, if I take the integral from zero to one of theta raised to the eighty-five and one minus theta raised to the 223, this is gonna equal the beta function of 86 comma 224, because this is theta raised to the alpha minus one and one minus theta raised to the uh, beta minus one. So alpha is gonna be 86 and beta is gonna be 224, okay? And, and therefore, the PDF of the posterior distribution can be expressed as this. All right. Okay, so again, just want to kind of pause there, make sure we're 
we're feeling uh, good about all of this. Feels okay? I guess I'll give you your second quiz answer. Second quiz answer is B as in bear. B as in bear. Okay. All right. Um, PDF of the posterior distribution is this. Okay. And so, um, and if you look at Wait, I messed this up. This needs to be a one over, I apologize. Not, the integral is, sorry, there's a typo. This needs to be one over, sorry, <laughs> one over B. Let me, uh, gotta fix that. That's much better. <laughs> All right, so we have this uh, one over B here. And again, um, oh, I got to fix it over on this slide as well. Um, All right, so uh, yes, we have uh, one over. Uh, beta 86224 times this. And, and this, if you uh, look at the form of the beta distribution, this is exactly e equal, equal to having a beta distribution with a, alpha equal to 86 and beta equal to 224. Okay, so this is the posterior distribution ends up being a beta distribution with, uh, with these parameters 86 and uh, beta 224. And we can generalize this relationship. Generalize this relationship between the beta prior distribution and a binomial likelihood. Okay. And so um, if you have a prior distribution for theta with uh, values alpha and beta, okay, uh, this is going to be your prior distribution. And then if you have a binomial distribution or a sequence of Bernoulli distributions, then the uh, the likelihood that you have is going to be um, theta raised to the z. If you have a total of z successes in uh, n trials, okay, you got theta raised to the z and one minus theta raised to the n minus z. And so when you multiply these two together, you're basically going to get. Uh, so if we just focus on the, uh, the portions parts with the theta, okay? You're gonna get theta raised to the, you just add these up, z plus alpha minus one. And then you take, uh, you combine the, uh, the exponents here. I've got n minus z plus beta minus one. So this becomes n minus z plus beta minus one, okay? And, uh, and so that becomes that part. And then as we established in kind of an earlier slide here, to make it a, a PDF, you need to find the normalizing constant. And the normalizing constant for this is going to be beta of z plus alpha and um, comma n minus z plus beta over here. OK. And this is, this is the PDF of a beta distribution uh, with these shape parameters. Is that okay? All right, and so this is the um, overall uh, relationship between the beta and the binomial distribution. And this is uh, kind of enshrined right here as well. If I can, how do I zoom in? Uh, I guess it's getting a little bit bigger. So if you look at the beta, beta binomial distribution, uh, this is basically what you have here, um, Z is, uh, z is equal to the sum of your successes. So the sum of the x's is that what we have here. So um, the prior is alpha and beta, and then the posterior is going to be alpha plus z, or the sum of the x's. And then um, 
and the posterior is going to be beta plus either the sum of the, the n's or the n's uh, minus the, the z's or the sum of the x's. Okay, and uh, and so this is what we get. Okay, um, so this is kind of enshrined in the the beta binomial distribution or beta binomial model. And uh, and I also think the uh, the textbook, if you uh, uh, which you have to do for um, your part of your homework this week, okay, is uh, is to read chapter six in your textbook. Um, uh, the textbook does a very good job of explaining all of this as well. Okay, so let's um, let's take a look. This, uh, if we look at uh, our baseball example, this is kind of what the picture looks like. Okay, and and in this, we're basically when we create a posterior distribution, we can kind of think of it as almost like a compromise between the prior distribution and the likelihood. Okay, so the prior distribution. So before we saw our new player play baseball at all, prior to that, we just kind of had the generic prior distribution of batting averages, which was, you know, most baseball players are going to have. Uh, almost everyone has a batting average over 0.2. Most of them will have batting averages less than 0.3, and uh, and everyone's going to have a batting average less than 0.4. You know, and you know, very few above 0.35. So this was kind of our prior distribution for batting averages. Um, when we looked at the player um, play, he had uh, 10 at bats and had five hits. Okay. And so the likelihood of that data will have this kind of shape, okay? 10, 10 hits, I'm sorry, 10 at bats and five hits. So P will, will be maximized or the uh, theta is maximized at 0.5. Sorry, I think in my plots I put P. Um, but theta is maximized at 0.5, but we know that um, you know, our intuition tells us that there's no way he can sustain this over the course of an entire season. Okay, and so the uh, posterior distribution, um, this is what the posterior distribution ends up being, which is um, a beta distribution with uh, parameters um, 86 and 224. Okay, so we took uh, 81 and we added 5 to it. And so we have a posterior distribution with 86 and, um, and we did 219 plus five, which is uh, 224. Okay. And so if I plot all three of them, this is what it looks like. The prior is in red. The likelihood is in blue here and kind of comparatively it's, it's, it's a lot lower. Okay. And the posterior distribution is kind of like a, um, it, it's a product of the red and the blue distribution together. Okay. So that uh, what we're saying here is that, yes, uh, now that we've seen this player play and, and he got five hits out of 10 at bats, we're inclined to say he's going to be better than your average player prior to us knowing anything about him. Um, we're going to say, okay, probably a little bit better than the, than average, but we're not going to drastically shift our beliefs about um, a player's batting average to, to something dramatic and, and, you know, under frequency statistics, the maximum likelihood estimate would have been 0.5. Okay, but now kind of we're going to adjust it to see, be something like you know a little bit higher, 0.2 something something. Okay, so it just shifts just a tiny bit. All right, you know I, I could probably draw uh, some more of these things. Okay, so I did I did one more, but I feel like I, I want to do. Uh, <laughs> more of these prior and posterior things, okay? So again, I'm gonna keep the exact same prior distribution here. Uh, and this time, I'm going to have, uh, the data is going to be, um, he's managed to sustain this, um, um, he's managed to sustain this um, batting average over 100 at bats, which is which is quite impressive. So in 100 at bats, uh, the player has earned 50 hits. Okay. And um, and so the posterior 
is a is a blend between the likelihood and the prior and this is this is what it looks like okay and so after a hundred at bats which is <laughs> Um, the player has managed to get um, 50 hits, which is in incredible. Okay, but uh, you know, 100 at bats is still far from an entire season's worth of at bats or an entire career's worth of at bats. And so, uh, again, there's kind of this general notion that the player is probably not going to sustain this ratio of uh, of batting 500 over the course of the entire season. And so, you know, the player has certainly proved himself capable. Of being a very good hitter um, by having 50 hits out of 100 at bats and so your posterior distribution you know gets is shifted even more from the prior distribution but again it doesn't line up completely to the um to the likelihood here okay so there, it's again it's a it's a compromise between the prior and the likelihood and you get something in between here okay we got a couple questions in the chat once is is the posterior in reference to the player or the general pop professional baseball hockey, the posterior is in reference to whoever gener or whatever generated this data. So in this case, it's the player. The player generated the data of five hits out of 10 at-bats or 50 hits out of 100 at-bats. And so what is the distribution of kind of the theta responsible for generating this data? So what is the what is the distribution of the batting average for this one particular player? Okay, um, if you wanted to shift it to kind of a, a general population where you're trying to figure out the theta of a population, you just have to, uh, you'd use the data from the general population as well. Okay, so, um, so what we're doing here is we're looking, we're trying to create a posterior distribution for the unknown parameter of whatever process is producing our data. Okay. Uh, why is the likelihood a beta distribution, uh, not a binomial? So, um, yeah, the technically the likelihood is not a beta distribution. Um, technically, the likelihood is proportional. So I, I'm I'm using a beta distribution to kind of plot the likelihood. The likelihood is technically. Um, this is a uh, this is a function that is proportional to the likelihood. Okay, so one thing about likelihoods. Okay, the uh, so the likelihood is just this portion. Okay, it's just this portion, and if I um, include the uh, some kind of normalizing constant here, then it becomes a beta distribution. Um, but technically, the likelihood is just this, and it's the likelihood, it's the likelihood function, which means the data, the number of successes and the number of trials is fixed and the value that varies is kind of your theta, whether you're gonna have um, a larger theta or smaller theta. Um, whereas in the, the, the binomial distribution, you, you have a discrete distribution because you're looking at the probability of getting, um, you know, five successes or six successes or seven successes, and uh, and it's the distribution, uh, you know, it's the probability of each of those, of those outcomes, which is going to be um, discrete, but um, but the uh, but the likelihood function is a function of the unknown parameter in this case theta, theta or p. Okay, um, let me just kind of do a few more of these things. Um, so, um, come over here. All right, so we could start off with any kind of other, um, uh, Actually, maybe we don't want to so here just yet. Um, any other kind of prior and likelihood uh, scenario here? All right. And so, um, if the uh, if the prior distribution, let's say, um, let's say you had a different prior distribution. Let's say you had another player who, for a very very long time, um, was a, was kind of a a superstar. 
or I don't know, not a superstar, but like maybe um, maybe an average player has already um, had a bunch of at bats, okay? And then, uh, and somebody says, you know what? This player is now in a slump, okay? Um, and, uh, and is only gonna get, um, um, you know, is performing uh, poorly, okay? Does that mean, um, so if, if we just treat this kind of in a, in a simple fashion, so let me just show you, uh, did I mess this up? Okay, so here's a player um, kind of established, uh, maybe, um, so has played for a very long time. And so prior to looking at kind of the new data reflecting this quote player's slump, this is the prior distribution, okay? Indicating somebody, uh, we have, a, we've, we've accumulated a lot of data. So this is, we're pretty confident about the player's um, batting ability, okay? And, um, and somebody accuses this player of being in a slump because in the last 100 at bats, the player only earned 20 hits, okay? And so how do we incorporate this um, into the, uh, into our understanding of the player's distribution is we're going to kind of take a compromise between what we believed prior and mix it in with uh, the likelihood of our data. And we get something, um, we're gonna make a slight adjustment in the posterior. So the posterior is this uh, black line where it gets uh, shifted slightly lower, okay? Um, on the other hand, um, you could have an established player and um, and perhaps the player truly is in a slump and uh, and is reflected after um, maybe uh, maybe he's had uh, many, many at bats, okay? Um, maybe like a thousand at bats. and and in those thousand at bats is only able to maintain. Um, kind of a, the number of hits is something like 200, okay? So again, uh, prior to looking at anything in the data, you know, this is, perhaps this is the, uh, uh, the prior distribution, okay? And then uh, is in a slump. So at, in a thousand at bats is only able to get 200 hits, okay? So has a much lower um, likelihood here. And so the posterior is gonna end up being a compromise between these two. So this is the prior distribution, which is uh, in red, the likelihood, which is kind of over here. And, uh, and so the posterior ends up kind of being um, somewhere in between the red and the blue, okay? So this could be like in the first, uh, I don't know, five, or five years of the player's career um, has a fairly high batting average. And then, I don't know, something happens and then so for the last 1,000 at-bats has a much lower batting average, okay? So what's this player's overall batting average? Looking at, it, at this, it's gonna be somewhere in between, okay? And that, that often reflects kind of our, our real life intuitive experience regarding um, um, incorporating new data with what we uh, knew prior, is that um, um, our our current set of beliefs is kind of a, a blend of everything we've learned before, incorporating um, kind of new information uh, as well. And, uh, and what you believe after learning stuff is gonna be a, a bit of a hybrid of, uh, you know, prior and um, prior beliefs and current data to get kind of your posterior um, distribution or posterior set of beliefs here. Okay. Um, you got some examples uh, similar to this in your homework um, for you to explore um, priors and likelihoods and posteriors. And um, uh, I don't know if you guys had any questions. Uh, this is, uh, we'll end a little bit early today, um, but this is kind of what I've got uh, planned for you here uh, regarding the beta and the binomial, all right? And then, um, oh, the last quiz answer, last quiz answer is E, E as an elephant, E as an elephant. Okay, 
so we'll end here today. And then on Friday, we'll take a look at, um, at doing inference with this. Okay, so with, uh, with maximum likelihood estimation, you could just use uh, one number, right? You'd say the maximum likelihood estimate is this. And then if we wanted to do calculations um, based on that, you just plug that one number in. But, uh, but it gets a little bit more complicated uh, from the Bayesian um, uh, perspective here. Okay. All right. Um, with that, I'll let you guys go and we'll see you guys on Friday. Uh, last quiz answer again was E as an elephant. All right. I'll see you guys then. <laughs>